Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. I have prepared a HVAC training board and we're going to go over how to troubleshoot an all-purpose relay. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. I am very excited to introduce my HVACR training board and today we're going to go over how to troubleshoot an all-purpose relay. Before we can begin, I would like to explain exactly what we are looking at here. So let's go over our components. Here is the brain of our system. Here is our thermostat. If we look here, we have a low voltage terminal block. And here we're going to be distributing power for our low voltage side of our control circuit. This fan here is a representation of our evaporator fan. This is the all-purpose relay we're going to be troubleshooting. And this is going to be the starting component for our evaporator fan motor. If we look here, this is a contactor, specifically a two-pole contactor with a 24-volt coil. In between, you can see we have a timer. This is just a time delay. If we look above here to the top right corner, this is a representation of our condenser fan motor. This light bulb is a representation of our compressor. This contactor is the starting component for our condensing unit. A condensing unit consists of a compressor, a condenser coil and a condenser fan. If we look here, we can see we have a transformer. This specifically is a step down transformer, converts high voltage to low. In this case, we have 120 volts coming in and it steps it down to 24. On the bottom right corner, we have two access ports where you would be able to connect refrigerant gauges to perform all types of tasks. In this case, we will be installing low pressure and high pressure controls in a real life application. So definitely stay tuned for that. Here we have a handy box with a receptacle. This is how I would be supplying power to the unit. If we follow this line, we have another terminal block and this is our high voltage terminal block. I left it open so we could actually troubleshoot as if this was a real unit in real life. Leaving there, we have a flip switch. In this case, this is our disconnect. And to top it off, if you see this piece here, this is just a inline fuse that I added to protect the 24 volt side of this circuit. With that being said, let's get started into troubleshooting our relay. In this case, this is our evaporator fan motor relay, and we're gonna check the system to know how it's actually supposed to work. Just a heads up, if anybody finds this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week, and let's get straight into it. Before attempting to troubleshoot a relay, please note this video is for professionals only and it is also extremely important to understand the theory of how a relay works and a all-purpose relay. I did make a few videos on that. I will be leaving links in the description and you'll also be seeing a pop-up in your screen at any moment. I highly recommend watching those videos before watching this one. And before we begin, we're going to go over with a brief description at what we're actually looking at. So every relay has a coil and sets of points. So on the bottom here, where we see the two wires, this is our coil. It's actually, this is one side of the coil, these two points, and then these two points is the other set of our coil. In this relay, it's actually like two in one because here, these three points represent one relay. And then here, these three points represent a second relay. 
With that being said, you can see only one relay here is being used. And that is going to be our top relay. So on the left side, both of these points represent a common. Both of these points represent normally closed. And both of these points represent normally open. So here you can see we have wires on our coil, which energizes the relay. And we had a set of normally open points or contacts. So the way that this is supposed to work is that when you set your thermostat to fan on, it is gonna energize G from your thermostat, which by code, your color is gonna be green. It's gonna energize this coil. And here we have a set of points. On this side, we have a constant 120 volts. And since it's normally open contacts, when the relay energizes, well, when the coil energizes, it's gonna send power from here to here. So now your normally open point is now closed. Once it closes, it now sends electricity and your fan is going to start. I have now plugged in this cord into our receptacle. So now this board has power and we can begin by turning on our fan. I'm gonna set the thermostat to fan on. And when I do so, it's gonna send power from our G wire across to one side of our coil and the other side makes its way back to common on the transformer so when you send the 24 volts through this wire this relay will be energized you're going to hear a click and that's going to energize this fan all right so i'm going to turn it off so in this case, everything works. So we sent the signal on the G wire to energize the other side of our coil. And once this energized, it sent 120 volts from one side of the relay from common to our normally open. And once that closed the circuit, it sent power to our fan to start the fan. All right, so let's start with the low voltage side. All right, so we're gonna be checking everything through our R wire. And honestly, this is better because not every thermostat has a C wire. And by having that, it does change your readings. But every single system does have an R, which is your power wire and your red wire. So this is the preferred troubleshooting method that I personally use in the field. So we have our meter set to volts and between R and G, you can see we have 28 volts. So that's our 24 volts that we speak of. Okay. When we set this to on, you're going to see, we're going to have a voltage drop. And when we get a zero reading, that means we just sent power. So, Let's set this to on and watch the meter. You see that? That means our circuit closed. That means our thermostat is doing the job. So when you're not calling for the fan, between R and G, your red and green wire, you're supposed to have 24 volts. And when you call for the fan between R and G, you're supposed to have zero volts. If you still have 28 volts, that means the thermostat's not doing its job and you cannot further troubleshoot. All right, so I have nothing calling. We're gonna take our leads and check across the coil, which is these two wires. So we're gonna check across the coil. As you can see, we have no voltage. That's good. We're gonna turn the fan on and you're gonna see, once this actually sends power, we wanna make sure 
that this coil is energized. See, right now it's not energized, nothing's working. That's the way it's supposed to be. But when you call for fan, uh, your coil must be energized. So let's see what happens. Right there, you see we have our 27 volts, our 24. You gotta make sure that your control circuit is actually energizing your coil. All right, moving on. All right, so I'm checking across the points. So here are common and our normally open point. When we're not calling for anything between these two, we should have 120 volts because it's a 120 volt fan. As you can see, we have 124 volts. So we're checking between the points now. Once again, these are our points. We have one wire here and one wire here. So across the points, when we're not calling for anything, we should be reading 120 volts. All right, that means we have a normally open set of points and this is the way it's supposed to be when the coil is not energized. So now we're gonna energize the coil. We should get a voltage drop. You see, we have zero volts now and you can hear that this fan started. So basically right now, we de-energized our coil, so there's no voltage on the coil. So across common and normally open the points, we have 120 volts. When we energize the coil, we have zero volts. That means the relay did its job. So just to go over one last time, between common and normally open when we're not calling for this relay to energize we're gonna have 120 volts once we energize the coil and we have 24 volts we're gonna close the normally open points and now you're gonna have zero volts between the two that's how you check and that's how you know if this is operating or not using voltage and if you're gonna check the other set of points, it would just be the exact opposite. So if you would check between common and normally closed, when you check between the two, you should have zero volts. And then once the relay's energized, you would have 120 volts. It would just do the exact opposite. So once you know your coil is being energized or not you should know that you should get the change in voltages so let's say we're de-energized we check between this point doesn't even matter which point at this one you just check between any two when this energizes and de-energizes you need to see that voltage drop if you do or don't that's going to tell you if that relay is good or bad so for instance let's say we're checking between common and normally open and we are de-energized meaning the coil is not being energized we have no signal so we would have 120 volts let's say we call for this to energize and we know our coil is energized and we have 24 volts across it because it's a 24 volt system if it was 120 volt coil or 208 you would need to get that reading across the coil to know if it's energized or not. In this case, it's 24. So let's say we know there's 24 here now, but we don't get the voltage drop. This is a bad relay. And a little trick of the trade is sometimes the contacts get a little stuck. So you could just take something insulated and smack it. You might actually open or close those contacts that are not doing its job. Things can get tricky and confusing, but once you get the hang of it, it's just like tying your shoes. So with this demonstration, we know what to expect in which scenario where we should or shouldn't have voltage. 
and with that we can focus on troubleshooting the rest of the system where we could eliminate the relay as our suspect so if we know our coil is energized we have the proper voltage and at the same time we are opening and closing our contacts with the proper voltage coming out of the relay we now know has nothing to do with the relay our control circuits working then we would look into our component that's not operating maybe it's the fan motor and that's going to be another lesson that was a quick lesson on troubleshooting a relay and some basics and i really hope everybody found this video interesting or helpful and if you did please drop a like comment and subscribe as i come out with new videos every week and i'm looking forward to troubleshooting more on this board and i'll catch you all next time